the Euphrates, the Nile, the Indus, and the Ganges. When you heard these names, what images do you see in your mind? Where have you heard these names before? What do they have in common? That's right, they are all rivers. And what is special about these five rivers? These ancient rivers supplied water needed for the world's very first civilizations. Along the bank of the Tigris and the Euphrates, in ancient Mesopotamia, people worked together to grow food, build cities, and develop a way of writing. Pyramids were built up and down the Nile River in Egypt, and in Asia, the Indus and the Ganges, snaking their way through India and Pakistan, have long been worshipped for their life-giving waters. Today, we are going to learn about China's geography, which includes two more rivers that belong to this special group. The Yellow River, Huanghe, and the Yangtze River, Changjiang. We will talk more about the rivers later in today's class. For now, let's get to know about China's geography. The geography of China had a lot of influence on its history and culture. Flights to China from the outside world were really hard to get. Back in the early history of the region, really, really hard since airplanes were not invented for a few thousand years after the time we are talking about. China is the third largest country in the world, and it has every type of climate on Earth, from subarctic to tropical. China borders a total of fourteen other countries, including India to the southwest beyond the Himalayan mountains, home to the tallest peak in the world, Mount Everest. Mount Everest stands over twenty nine thousand feet tall, that is approximately eight thousand eight hundred forty four meters. The Tibet Plateau nestles between the Himalayan mountains and the Kunlun Mountains in western China, and makes up one fourth of China's land. The average height of the Tibet Plateau is sixteen thousand feet above sea level, nearly five thousand meters. Making it the tallest plateau in the world, the Taklamakan Desert of northwest China is a cold desert. Climate plunging as low as minus four degrees in winter. The Mongolian Plateau dips into northern China. This massive plateau measures. One hundred twenty thousand square miles, that is about three hundred forty thousand square kilometers. The Gobi Desert sits on the southern part of the Mongolian Plateau. From ancient times through the Middle Ages, there were several major stops on the Silk Road for weary travelers traversing the Gobi Desert. The Yangtze River and the Yellow River both start in the Tibet Plateau, divided by the high snow-capped Bayangkra Mountains, are the two longest rivers in China, and they too are places where early civilizations begin. More people live in the Yellow River and the Yangtze River Valley today than in any other region on Earth. To the north and west of those river valleys, there are the gigantic deserts, and to the south, the Himalayan mountains, and of course, 
To the east is the Pacific Ocean, the largest ocean in the world. Now you can see why we said getting to and from China during ancient times from the west was extremely difficult. Like we mentioned before, with no help from the airspace and often deadly. Which isolated civilizations from other influences, trade, and sometimes invasions for thousands of years? Chinese civilizations is the only one of the four great ancient civilizations that survived: the ancient Mesopotamians, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Greeks. Were all destroyed by so-called barbarians. Some say this contributes to the unique geographic spots of China, as it develops isolated from other cultures and remains so for thousands of years.